Across America and around the world, you're listening to the Hour of the Time, the only hour that ever was or ever will be, for during this hour you will decide your future and thus our collective futures. I'm your host, William Cooper. Everybody look back in that corner at the far side of the room where it's real dark behind that chair. I'm going to turn on a very, very bright light, and I want you all to watch the cockroaches scatter. For tonight, I'm going to read verbatim to you from a book that we found in a dusty shelf far back in the rear of a used bookstore that proves beyond any shadow of a doubt that what I've been revealing to you in the segment, the many segments of the series, entitled The Mystery Schools, on this program, The Hour of the Time, has been not only true, but right on target. And the first time that this information has ever been exposed in its entirety to the people of the world. Now, you had better go to the used bookstores in your cities, and you'd better get there before the cockroaches get there, because I tell you now, they know that we are searching for proof and that we are digging for the evidence that we will use in the future to hang them by their own rope. You need to get there first and buy any and every book that is concerned with any and every secret society, mystery, religion, or cult that you can find. If you don't understand them, and if you don't want to use them to help us expose these people, then send those books to us, because we will put them to the best use. I'm holding in my hand an old, faded, what used to be red, hardbacked, covered book. It's almost orange now, because it's faded with age, entitled Fundamental Laws, 68th Convocation. On the front of the cover is some of the symbology of the mystery schools. There is a rope representing the snake eating its own tail, also known as the magic circle. Within this magic circle, there is a triangle, actually three triangles, one within the other. Within the triangles, there is the symbol of the skull and bones. There is the symbol of wings around the world. There's the symbol of the arc, the anchor, and the three letters T-R-Y beneath the three triangles. This is the verbatim written report published in 1916, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm going to read to you from. Fundamental Laws, a report of the 68th Convocation of the Rose Cross Order giving a resume of the proceedings of the convocation together with most of the lectures that were delivered during this time of the convocation by the several delegates present. Also a report of the work of ancient initiation in the grove of Osiris as especially prepared for the occasion. Below that is the symbol of a triangle with three stone steps representing the three degrees of initiation. Up on the top step is a cross, in the center of which is a rose. And beneath the triangle, again, the three letters, T-R-Y. This is copyrighted 1916, published by the Philosophical Publishing Company, Allentown, Pennsylvania, for the members of the Rose Cross Order. On the next page is a roll of honor. One of the names here stands out and almost knocked me over when I saw it, for the name is Lars Hansen. Now, it is not the Lars Hansen that we've discussed on this show, and we're going to look into it to find out if this was his father or grandfather or great-grandfather. could have been either one of the three. But we will find out, believe me. We know that Lars Hansen's parents were members of the Mystery School, and in particular, the Metternich Stell group, where Lars Hansen was reared. An explanation of the contents of this book, and I'm reading verbatim from the introduction and explanation. In explanation of the contents of this book, it is to be stated that these articles do not give the inner work of the Rose Cross Order, but simply the outer, the public teachings. Now, you'll remember in the 
Mystery School series, I taught you about the exoteric and the esoteric. What you're going to get in this book, because they never publish the esoteric anywhere, it's always hidden in symbology, but there are incredible admissions in this book that you will hear in the exoteric. Reading again, verbatim. The Illuminati and its soul science work may be called the child of the Rose Cross Order. Years ago it was found that where there was one person who desired to follow the work with heart and soul, in other words, who was willing to live the life as taught by the order, there were an hundred others who desired teachings from the order, but who were not willing to dedicate their lives to the sublime work. Now I break from this for a moment to remind you that I have previously stated that the fraternity of Freemasons, the ancient order of the Rose and Cross, the sovereign and military order of the Knights of Malta, the Knights Templars, the Mormon Church, all of these, the Illuminati, the Order, the Skull and Bones, are all the same organization. And what you have just heard is the first admission of that fact. And you are going to hear more as I progress. And remember, I'm reading this right out of their own publication, a hard-bound book published by the Philosophical Society in Allentown, Pennsylvania, specifically for the Rose Cross Order. Continuing, these thousands had to be taken care of, and as a result, the Illuminati and its soul science work was born. When in April, now that's April of 1916, folks, April of 1916, remember that. When in April, the order went forth to the brethren that a sacred convocation was to be held. All delegates were requested to prepare articles on soul science so that regular lecture sessions could be held. The lectures that follow are the result. All these lectures were given in open session and are to be considered as soul science work, though in entire harmony with the teachings of the Rose Cross Order. The work of the Rose Cross Order, as given to its students, can never be published. It is a secret, sacred work between teacher and student. Let me read that again for you. It is a secret, sacred work between teacher and student. It is a soul training, an inner initiation, and such work continues until the student has reached initiation, after which he is called upon to attend a convocation, and at which time the degree work is conferred upon him. But the inner work always precedes the outer work, as the outer work is only a bond binding together the brotherhood. Thus a word in explanation. Many having heard of the great order and its work, and actually knowing nothing of its inner work, have ignorantly or with fraudulent intent established so-called Rose Cross bodies. And these bodies, knowing nothing of the true work of the Rose Cross, have nothing but a ritualistic, initiatory, rite, or degree work. We would refer all seekers to authorities on the Rose Cross and on initiation, and they will then find that the true Rose Cross is actually a school of spirituality with a degree ceremonial initiation as the climax. And this is signed by the Hierophant of the Order. In the preface, early in the summer, instructions were received from the hierarchies to call the inner circle of the Rose Cross Order into session, and thus to fitly celebrate the 68th year of the Rose Cross Order in America. Orders were immediately issued to those who have the privilege of attending this convocation, and on June the 1st, 1916, the convocation was called to order and the preliminary lectures were started. At this convocation, all delegates were instructed to prepare and to deliver articles which should have a bearing on the conditions of the present day and which should be the means of helping humanity. However, because of the limited amount of time at the disposal of those who could attend, only a few were enabled to prepare such lectures with the results that there were not as many lectures delivered as might have been had the delegates had more time at their disposal. But even so, 
There were from two to three lectures each day, and most of these lectures will be found in this present volume, though many of the lectures cannot be given in book form, as they were only delivered as from teacher to those of the inner circle. From the beginning of the month until the day of the 13th, there were lectures in the assembly hall which had been built in 1910 for the express purpose of holding these yearly convocations. But on the 13th, there were no lectures, as all of the day was required for making the preparations necessary in order that the ancient mysteries might be given to the delegates in a form of symbolism consisting of three degrees. I can do no better than to give the article prepared by Grace K. Morey of Buffalo, New York, the secretary of the Rose Cross Sacred College for the Buffalo, New York, papers and which appeared in the Buffalo Express July 16, 1916. This is entitled, Ancient Mysteries of Egypt Given in an Initiation of Three Degrees. Play close attention, folks for what you're going to hear now confirms much of what I have been revealing to you in the series on the hour of the time known as the mystery schools quoting from the book once again under the authority of the Rose Cross order founded in America in 1858 prominent delegates of the order were gathered in the most remarkable conclave held during the last five thousand years. The publication of whose records now opens to the world the connection of Egypt in her ages of true religion, power, and glory with the mystic seal of the United States, whose heraldic symbolism declaring the mighty destiny of America has until now only been known to a limited number. Not anymore. At Beverly Hall, in the beautiful Tohican Valley, about four miles from the town of Quakertown, men and women of all ranks of life and from all parts of the world, high masons and members of the Eastern Star, physicians, teachers, authors, and members of all denominations, inclusive of the Hebrew, all these assembled at the call of the Grand Master of the Rose Cross Order for the 68th Convocation. And that should silence the cockroaches who are now scurrying from the light, who say that they are not all one order. They are known as the Brotherhood, the Order, the Ancient Order of the Rose and Cross, the Fraternity of Freemasons, and, of course, those of you who have been listening know the rest. Reading again from the book, some years ago, R. Swinburne Clymer, author of The Philosophy of Fire, Ancient Mystic Oriental Masonry, The Rosicrucians, Their Teachings, Mysteries of Osiris, Soul Science and Immortality, and over 30 other works, bought a mountainous tract of land, and on this was built, quote, Beverly Hall, unquote. An assembly hall, press rooms and libraries and chemical laboratory, which surrounded by orchards, vineyards and rose gardens, set in terraced lawns, presents with its collie kennels and poultry plants a splendid combination of the beautiful and the practical. To this has been added the mystic, for in a secluded and wooded tract of fifty acres of this land, an artificial lake was made from a mountain stream, a throne room erected and other improvements made which would be needed for the initiation of neophytes in the Egyptian mysteries. The convocation was called to order on June 1st in the assembly hall, built over five years ago for that purpose, and the delivery of a series of lectures upon practical as well as mystical subjects began and continued until the close of the convocation. The delegates and teachers presented the lectures, which were followed by discussions upon the subjects of eugenics, scientific motherhood, code of ethics for the schools and home, spiritual Christianity, that's a joke, personal hygiene, diet and health, sin, authority and individuality, Jacob's Ladder, initiation, reincarnation, soul development, the second coming of the Christ, and the mystic significance of the seal of the United States. 
In the time of Solomon, as in the time of the Egyptian priesthood, no ceremony was ever held unless the circle of Solomon, commonly called the sacred seal of Solomon, had been previously prepared. But since the fall of Egypt and of the temple of Solomon, this seal has been practically unknown, except to a limited number of students of ancient religions and mysteries. Folks, the seal of Solomon is not the six-pointed star which is on the flag of Israel. It is not the seal of David or the star of David. It is not the seal of Solomon, as you will soon discover. During the first week in June, in the grove, especially prepared for the dramatization of the ancient mysteries of Osiris, the seal of Solomon, often called the Magic Circle, was especially built. And on June 11th, the dedication of the Magic Circle took place in the presence of the delegates of the Rose Cross Order, some of whom were natives of Germany, England, and Russia. This was in accordance with the system as practiced by the ancient priests of Egypt and the Sanhedrin of the Temple of Solomon. On the night of June 13th, the first session of the class, including those of the order taking part in the initiation, assembled in the Grove of Osiris, which was illuminated by electricity from a central powerhouse especially prepared for the purpose and the initiation of the ancient mysteries of Egypt in three degrees and six scenes. All students of the ancient mysteries and religions know that in the Temple of Solomon there were three courts. The outer court for the people being composed of 700 selected teachers and leaders. These were members of the first degree. Illuminati called also seekers, travelers, or soldiers, the middle court, or members of the second degree, were seventy in number and were supposed to be in the hall of meditation and acted as mediators between the people and the inner sanctuary. Above all was the inner court, or circle of the seven priests and the master or high priest, who were the teachers between God and man, mediators between the seen and the unseen. In the Egyptian mysteries, the first court was made up of the royal youth of Egypt, and such students from foreign countries as desired to enter the temple and priesthood, and these during probation were often known as, quote, soldiers of the priesthood, unquote. As it was their duty while undergoing the preliminary training and test to guard the priesthood and its work even to the death. The second class, corresponding to a second degree, were those who had passed this test and who were in the hall of meditation and purification in preparation for the first vows and the dedication of the body, mind, soul, and spirit to God and the service of mankind. The third class, called the third degree, were those who had passed with credit the tests of the first degree, the purification of the second as well as the various stages of development required of all students in the halls of meditation. In the royal third degree, which took place in the temple, the neophyte received the final instruction. After this came the final test in the beautiful ceremony of the death of the old life, the giving up of the body and its temptations, and the raising of the slain Osiris, our spiritual body, by his faithful spouse Isis, the soul, with the final illumination. On the 15th of June, the first section of the representatives left Beverly Hall for their respective homes, and the second section began to arrive for the preparatory lectures, and on the 19th of June, the ceremonies were repeated so that all might witness the initiation and take part in it so as to become members. So far as can be learned, either through travel or history, never before since the fall of Egypt and its priesthood and the fall of the Temple of Solomon has there ever been a grove, a lake to represent the Nile, a magic circle, or a temple prepared, nor is it believed that anywhere in the world does there today exist such a circle. Nearest to this, however, is Stonehenge of the Druids of Britain, to which their descendants travel each year at a certain time to greet the sun and renew their vows. This is the first time, therefore, in five 
thousand years that any order has attempted to build up this sacred emblem under the stately oak so that people of modern civilization might witness the beauties of the life and religion of the ancient people whose teachings of individual soul development made the glory of Egypt, the lost dreams of all Israel, the teachings of the Magi of Persia, all that was true in India, the splendid philosophy of Greece, the magnificence of the early Romans, the basis of pre-Christian Ireland's great schools, as well as the familiar Holy Grail legends of Britain, Celt, and Gaul. In this light of brotherhood of man and fatherhood of God was founded this great republic foretold by Virgil, upon whose seal is set the Egyptian pyramid, completed by the white stone of spiritual purification as the crown of the ages. It's time for our break, folks. Don't go away, for I'll be right back after this very short pause. In the winter, far beneath the snow, lies a seed that with the sun's love becomes the rose. Only those of you who have listened to the full series of broadcasts on the hour of the time of the mystery schools will understand exactly what that means and you will know and have a entirely different understanding of that song which is beautiful to say the least but does not convey the message that many of you have always thought you heard you see, the mystery schools speak to each other in symbology, in a symbolic language that they have learned to use over the millennia to hide their real secrets, their real intent, their real work, which has always been from the beginning to reestablish on this earth an ancient government ruled by a council of wise men a benevolent despotism, a one-world totalitarian socialist government. Don't ever forget that, folks. If you love being free, the New World Order utopia is not for you, and it certainly is not for me. Continuing now from the book entitled Fundamental Laws, the publication of a report of the 68th convocation of the Rose Cross Order during which they admit the existence of the Illuminati, they admit the existence of the Order, they admit the existence of the Brotherhood, they admit that all of these secret organizations including Freemasonry are all the same organization all working toward the same goal. An incredible admission printed in their own publication, a hardbound book found up on a dusty shelf way back in the rear corner of an old used bookstore. Quoting again from the book, the American constellation of 13 stars set in the form of a double triangle was foretold by Merlin of King Arthur's court and the philosophy of the Holy Grail and of Egypt's glory and Solomon's temple has been the day star of every great American statesman from Washington to Abraham Lincoln. Now if you've been listening to this program you know the day star is a reference to Lucifer, the light bringer, the angel of light, the morning star, also known as the sun of the morning. After the ceremonies in the grove, there was given in the dining room of Beverly Hall at midnight a feast of the gods at which neither meat nor spices formed part of the menu, but only fruits, nuts, and other products of sun-kissed foods. And that should tell you something about sun-kissed oranges. <laughs> The conclusion of the rites was held at sunrise in the grove with a musical communion service at which nectar of roses distilled from the 30,000 roses blooming each June upon the lawns at Beverly Hall was served as emblematic of the wine of the soul, and for this service the rose bushes were planted several years ago. This is also from the book, folks. 
I wish that all the readers of this book might have been present at the preparation, at the building, and at the dedication of this ancient magic circle. Or I wish that I might be able to give a detailed description of these sublime ceremonies in this book. However, I cannot do this here, though I hope that in some future work I will be able to do so. Sufficient be it to say that when the stone made out of cement by one of the brothers was nearly finished, the dedication took place, and the emblems placed in the stone itself before it was completed were the American beauty rose in full bloom. This as a representation or symbol of the soul that has reached full illumination. The mystic ring. This was a solid gold ring belonging to one of the members present upon which had been engraved the cross and the pentagram. All members of the Magi will know what this symbol stands for. The ring itself, as is known to the Magi, is a protecting agent against all evil or malignant influences when worn during any ceremonial or developing work. And the true magic mirror. This is an emblem of the soul, which when fully developed will act as a mirror to the universe, wherein may be wisdom and truth. Lastly, a complete copy of the private textbook entitled, quote, Ritualistic occultism, unquote, which contains the ceremonies as made use of by the Magi. And four of these ceremonials were made use of by four of the Magi in the dedication of the magic circle. When all of this had taken place, the stone was completed, and then later in the day the characters were engraved upon the stone by the brother who had completed the stone. Of the midnight feast to the gods, and of the morning services which took place in the grove, it is not lawful for me to speak at this time. But it is my sincere prayer that all who are enrolled in the sacred schools may some day be present with us and witness these sublime ceremonies, especially as they are conferred in the spring of the year. In the spring of the year. Arrangements were made by the delegates present through voluntary contributions to either buy another large grove or if that is found impracticable to build a much larger hall in the grove of Osiris so that advanced ceremonies may be held the coming spring at the 69th convocation of the Rose Cross Order. Now I'm going to reveal something to you that I have never told you before on this program. I've been working up to it, and now is the time to tell you before I read from the next section of this book. For then you will understand what has been happening in the last 50 years and what is happening now. It was Harry Truman, a 33rd degree Freemason, who signed the United Nations Treaty, who pushed through and signed the United Nations Participation Act. It was also Harry Truman, a 33rd degree Freemason, operating in concert with Wild Bill Donovan, the head of the OSS, a member of the Sovereign and Military Order of the Knights of Malta and of the Order of the Knights Templar, who created the National Security Act, pushed it through Congress. Harry Truman signed it. It created the umbrella of national security, a curtain of secrecy. It created the Central Intelligence Agency, and behind this curtain of secrecy, the secret societies have been working to destroy the sovereignty of all nations and bring about a one-world totalitarian socialist government. And folks, all of the bugaboo enemies that you've been afraid of all your life were never enemies at all, for these were deceptions, manipulations. The only enemy, folks, that the people of the world have ever had is right here, right here in this country, down at the corner in your town, in the temple that has no windows. And now reading again from the book the report from the 68th Convocation of the Order of the Rose Cross. Introduction to the Great Seal 
It is rather a strange and an unknown thing for one to write an introduction to a single chapter appearing in a book, but the conditions are so unusual as to warrant it. More than a year ago, Grace K. Morey, the author of the article, The Great Seal of the United States and Its Mystic Significance, prepared a sketch for a short primer of the Illuminati teachings. And in this sketch, as will be shown by the drawings, it was brought out that man is not only a threefold being, but that he is actually a fourfold being as well. In short, that when he has succeeded in reaching soul illumination, he is the completed pyramid or true triangle. If the student will give serious study to the article on the seal of the United States, he will find that on the reverse side of the seal, which is as yet uncut, there is to be found the pyramid, but with the capstone as yet not placed, and thus he will see that the philosophy of the Illuminati is the absolute and undeniable philosophy upon which these United States are founded, as is clearly indicated by our fourfold philosophy, by the drawings representing our philosophy, and by the drawings of the reverse side of the United States seal. And thus it would appear that the unseen hierarchies which shaped the foundation of the great republic which must some day rule the world are the same hierarchies which gave us the soul science philosophy as taught by the Illuminati. And now you know why what has happened in this country has happened and you now know why what is happening today is happening and you now know why on the reverse of the great seal of the United States are the words Novus Ordo Cyclorum, which literally translated means the new order of the ages, also known, ladies and gentlemen, as the new world order. But I won't let you rest with that shock. Listen to this, dear listeners. Hold on to your chairs, because the incredible admission that is coming to you right out of the pages of this book is going to knock you flat. Reading again from the book. And thus it would appear that the unseen hierarchies which shaped the foundation of the great republic which must someday rule the world are the same hierarchies which gave us the soul science philosophy as taught by the Illuminati. And now let us look into the future, not far, but just beyond the line. We find that scholars condemn the design of the reverse side of the United States seal, that it has never been cut, but has remained hidden as though it were something to be ashamed of. However, though this appears the truth, it is not the truth. The reason why it has never been cut is because the time is not yet, as the capstone has not yet been set. And what is this capstone? My reader, prepare for a shock. When Atlantis ruled the word, that which is now America was connected with Egypt by what is now Mexico, and in Mexico, in the territory of Yucatan, there is a pyramid in which the fire philosophers worshipped God as divine fire and life in like manner as did the initiates of Egypt, for the two were then one. America is not complete, and will not be complete, cannot be complete, until Mexico is again part of America as she was in the long ago. And when Mexico is once again a part of the United States, then will the capstone have been set on the pyramid and the reverse side of the United States seal will be cut. Thus you will see that the soul science primer with its drawings is but the beginning of the article concerning the seal of the United States, while the article on body, mind, spirit, and soul is the final thereof. May it not be long until the Holy Pyramid shall be completed, and may it be completed without the shedding of blood. Lovingly given, R. Swineberg Clymer, Beverly Hall, Quakertown, Pennsylvania, July 6, 1916. And now you know the final truth, ladies and gentlemen.
Now you know the purpose of the free trade agreements. Now you know the purpose of GATT and NAFTA. Now you know where we're headed. Now you know that the middle class in this country is doomed. Now you know that the New World Order is being brought about by the intelligence community and the secret societies whose headquarters are in the United States of America, just 13 blocks from the White House. Now you know in the incredible admissions in their own writing in this book published by the ancient order of the Rose and Cross. Now you know that the Illuminati is real, that Freemason is a part of the Illuminati, that the Rose and Cross is a part of the Illuminati, that they are also called the Order, the Brotherhood, that they also consist of the Knights Templars, they also consist of the Knights of Malta and all of the other secret societies whose organizational structure is in the shape of a pyramid with a few at the top who really know what the great work and the great plan is and a whole bunch of slathering idiots thirsting after the secrets on the bottom who will never, ever know anything. Are the cockroaches scattering? If this broadcast doesn't do it, nothing will. If this doesn't wake you up, ladies and gentlemen, nothing will. If you don't understand now the 18 hours of the series that I've aired on the Mystery Schools, you will never understand it now or in the future. If you don't know where we're headed now, then you never will. If you are not concerned now, then you have already placed the chains upon your ankles and you have already watched freedom fly. If this broadcast does not do it, nothing will. This is the last voice of freedom. This is the only revelatory media source in the world today. The hour of the time is the only outlet for truth left upon this earth. Ladies and gentlemen, what you have heard tonight is the final parting of the curtain. It is the opening of the last door that was to be opened. It is the final understanding of where we have been, where we are at, and where we are going. It is the light. It is the illumination in the darkest corners. You are looking at the forbidden fruit. You have heard tonight what you were never to hear, what has been forbidden for thousands of years. You now know what the great work is. You now know who is bringing it about. You too can find this book if you search hard enough in the incredible admissions that are contained within it. will give you the ammunition and the armor to march out here on the battlefield with me and many others who are trying to stop what is coming. Remember what Mr. Swineburn said at the end of his article, and I'll read that to you again. May it not be long until the Holy Pyramid shall be completed, and may it be completed without the shedding of blood. Lovingly given, R. Swineburne Climber, Beverly Hall, Quakertown, Pennsylvania, July 6th, 1916. And I am telling you now, their goal is to destroy all other religions, save theirs, destroy all existing nation states, save theirs, and shackle the mob. And that is you. Good night, dear listeners, and God bless you all.